I was reading today all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you were. I, uh, yeah, I'm trying to see what the world is talking about, Will. Mm-hmm. Trying to see what's happening in, what was it, 2022? Dang. It is now, yes. It's a cool year. Cool note. Anyway, turns out a lot of stuff that was happening in 2021 is still happening in 2022. Sure. But then there's some new things as well, like a potentially hazardous asteroid. <laughs> More than twice the size of the Empire State Building will make a close pass by Earth next week. These stories, everybody, people always love these stories. I think this uh, story was searched like half a million times or something. I think mainly because uh, you can see it. Like if you have a telescope, right? Oh, you're talking about looking at asteroids? Mm Mm-hmm. I think we all just, uh, there's something sobering about asteroid talk of these... The potential power harnessed inside of one of these objects that just float past us all the time and mm-hmm. have the potential to end it all. <laughs> but don't most of the time. I mean, up until now, yeah, pretty much not at all. An asteroid that is wider than the tallest building in the world is set to make one of its closest encounters with Earth next week. NASA projects that the asteroid named 7482, also what a... Terrifying name. Just seven. Yeah, that one. Just seven. Just seven four eight two. The seven. <laughs> oh man. It'll fly by on January 18th. Asteroid estimated to measure at roughly one kilometer or more than 3,280 feet across. A size that is more than twice the height of New York's Empire State Building. See, here's the thing. You you think about that and you're like, ah, oh, well, I don't know. It's not that big. We got an Empire State Building. Yeah. We, we got a CN Tower locally. And you think, Earth is a lot bigger than that. So what type of damage can it really do? Let me tell you something. It can do a lot of damage because it's coming with tremendous force. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, any and all evidence of uh, historic previous impacts uh, have been catastrophic, right? They... uh, the amount of energy that's exerted on on Earth and the dust cloud and the, I mean, you heard, you've heard theories, you've heard dinosaurs. Have you not heard these things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not just um, <laughs> asteroids hitting Earth. I think it's like yeah. the tidal waves and oh, tsunamis you like, oh, you and like all, all of, yeah, all of them. The after. You know what? There, there was a period there where it was like all those disaster movies. People were really into it. For a yeah, while. Dante's peak. NASA scientists say it would take an asteroid 60 miles wide to totally wipe out life on Earth. So 60 mile wide asteroid wipes out life on Earth. And you see what I'm saying? 60 miles, it's not much. Yeah. Like in the scope of Earth, it's a big That's asteroid. Like, uh, <laughs> about 100 kilometers. This is only, what, one kilometer? Yeah, it's only one kilometer. We're doing so just fine. Just please don't. It would destroy... 10% of Earth. Yeah, don't land. Don't <laughs> land right on top of me. Uh, yeah, what does it say? Oh, yeah, so it's hundreds more feet than Dubai's Burj Khalifa. Well, obviously, if it's twice the height of the Empire State Building, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory believes that the space body could come within 1,231,184 miles of Earth. 1,200,000 miles. Goes to show you, so it's a little bit of space out there. Well, mm-hmm. A little bit of room out there to spread out as far as asteroids are concerned and uh, not kill us. But let's say it was coming right at us. What's our best effort right now? What do we, is it, uh, what was that movie with Bruce Willis? Armageddon? <laughs> yeah. Is, is it <laughs> Ben Affleck? Is that Ben Affleck? Is it? They sent two is shuttles Bruce, together. Is and Bruce then, Willis in it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's the drilling guy. He's the drilling guy. So, so. And Ben Affleck sleeps with uh, his daughter. <laughs> talking about uh, Liv Tyler. Yes. And then Steve Tyler did the song for the movie. Yeah. Wow. Very memorable song. That must have happened 300 years ago. Is that still our best chance? We, you got to get the, no. <laughs> you got to get Bruce Willis up there? Or do, I you, think, do we uh, call Elon? What do we do? NASA? Sure, they can call Elon. They can call Elon. I think uh, in oh, reality... Oh, we try to nuke it. We try to nuke it, right? Uh, yeah. I think they would start sending Weapons. missiles. Missiles. 
to kind of veer off yeah. the asteroid. Well, I'm glad we sorted that out. I'm glad we yeah got we to solved that. asteroid <laughs> impacts. I'm glad we got to the forever. bottom of that. Uh, it's also anticipated this asteroid will pass by Earth again in July this year at a far greater distance, so less risky. Interesting, nonetheless. I don't know. I, Will says you can see it with your telescope. I didn't say that. He said it. Okay. Good yeah. luck looking well, for I'll that. Well, I'll try. Good luck looking for that. <laughs> OnePlus 10 Pro revealed at last. Specs, photo samples, and release info. Well, we shared some renders, but Pete has been busy on Twitter basically showing you everything you need to know about the mm -hmm. OnePlus 10 Pro uh, coming out shortly. You have this sort of quad circular setup layout on the back of it. Couple of colors shown off there as well. So there's like a, a a black with a seemingly matte finish, mm. that sort of brushed finish, and then there's a uh, what like a sage green. Has a nice, is it a tint? Tint hue. Hue. Is it a hue yeah. or a tint? One or the One, other. Yeah, it gets lighter. The OnePlus 10 Pro has now been fully unveiled. Still a little while before you'll be able to buy it. Uh, but the new OnePlus flagship is bristling with enviable specs that should make this one of the top phones of the year. 6.7-inch QHD+, 120Hz adaptive refresh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 8 gigs or 12 gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 storage. Cameras, 48 megapixel main, 50 megapixel ultra-wide, 8 megapixel telephoto. A front camera that is 32 megapixels, 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 80 watt wired charging and 50 watt wireless. I think that's got what you're looking for. It's got what you need in it. I was trying to take a zoom. I was trying to zoom in with my Pixel phone mm. today. Mm. Pixel 6 Pro. You know, with the, it gets to the digital zoom at a certain point. Yeah. It was one of those moments where I was wishing that I had more reach. Like maybe one of those old uh, Samsung what was the one that had the space like zoom? Hundred X space zoom, but it wasn't really optical. Hundred X was that the S twenty? Was that the S twenty one Ultra or the S twenty Ultra that had the real long reach on it? There's a lot of phones out here. Oh, it was S twenty one Ultra. Okay, yeah, the phone I had before this one, I could have just had that. Then I would have got a good photo. But anyway, it was a it was a hawk. Oh, okay. This hawk would just it just landed in his tree in my yard and I was like, oh, this, you know, this guy's doing some hunting or something. He's looking around, moving from tree to tree. And, uh, but I was amazed at how well it was camouflaged in the tree, the current color of trees around here, mm. with the gradient and the brown and the beige and the bark. And then this hawk was in, like so much so that if you look at the photo, you're like, where's the hawk? Right. E even at the zoom. Uh, but it wasn't the prettiest photo, and and after I took it, I was like, man, need some more reach. Wish I had the ultra. Where's my Where's my ultra? My S twenty one ultra at. Uh, anyway, no, it came out fine. It was never going to be a great photo. Anyway, I would probably need some real camera gear to get it, make a great photo. Anyway, okay, here's the colors: volcanic black and emerald forest. Uh, yes, which is kind of a mint green. It's funny they call it emerald forest, but then they say it looks like mint green. Yeah. I like the sound of Emerald Forest better. It sounds a lot more prestigious. Are these photo samples as well? You know, they have the Hasselblad deal. It does look like they might be photo samples. Scroll back up to uh, this photo. Uh, yeah, the ability to shoot raw, more powerful editing possibilities. Okay, so that's taking, a nice shot. Taking the camera very serious as well. Yeah, a little waterfall action going on. Um, OnePlus 10 Pro, I'm curious about the software since the merge, mm. the merge with uh, Oppo, mm -hmm. you've, you've probably heard of this, I'm curious to see what, what kind of changes take place in the software, I've been a fan of uh, Oxygen OS in the past, um, apparently this software will be very much based on Color OS, which I haven't had as much exposure to on a daily basis, of course I've looked at Oppo devices, I've used them, but not in my pocket on the regular uh, anyway, this phone is shipping in China on January 13th. Uh, US and UK is unknown at the moment. And price is unknown at the moment, but obviously people looking forward to it. That's the next OnePlus flagship, OnePlus 10 Pro. Oh, this Canon story is very strange. It is, uh, it of course has to do with the chip shortage. Now, everyone has had this experience in the past of uh, slapping a, 
uh, needing to slap a cartridge into their uh, inkjet printer mm. only to discover that uh, the official cartridges from Canon or HP or whoever are, are much more expensive than the generic ones. Okay. Uh, not that I've filled up any cartridges recently, but I saw Shaquille O'Neal was doing the promos. <laughs> was he? For Epson saying, oh. refill your own cartridges. Never, <laughs> DRM is dead. Anyway, it can be very, it can be frustrating. And uh, this is one of those, uh, one of those moments where you feel like it comes full circle, I guess. I don't, I don't know. This is uh, an issue that, Canon has been having due to the chip shortage where they don't have access to the chips they use for the DRM on their cartridges. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is advising their customers to disable the DRM. They're giving them the instructions to disable the DRM so they can actually use these Canon branded mm -hmm. cartridges, which are lacking those DRM chips. They're, they're teaching you how to hack your own right. printer. Yeah. Which is just a very beautiful 2022 story. According to Canon's own support website in uh, Germany, the company is currently facing challenges in sourcing certain electronic components that are used in our consumables for our multifunction printers. In other words, Canon's been hit with the chip shortage and the only components Canon is missing aren't powering uh, video game consoles. Instead, they're just DRM. Mm. They're, not, they're not the most exciting types of chips. Yeah. I mean good I mean good on them. If they really? wanna <laughs> if they wanna make printing available, that's their only well, choice they right now. They kind of have to make printing available and they wanna sell cartridges still. They can't just go I mean it's a, it's a area of their business that's important. But they're not necessarily advising people to buy from third parties or to mm -hmm. uh, attempt some other scenario. Because that could damage the printer. Well, could or couldn't. I mean, that's the that's the whole point. That was the original yeah. uh, sales pitch for the DRM. Was maybe we just want to make sure, but in reality, they wanted they were giving the printers away for free because all the money to be made was in the cartridges. We're all very aware of this. Sure. In fact, they would do things like uh, stop printing if you know you've been in this pinch before where you needed to print something. I mean, I'm going back to like high school days or something. You need to print yeah. something and you have, <laughs> I know. and you yeah. have, well, you're lacking only one color, but it won't yeah. let you print anything. Exactly. Yeah. And you're like, what kind of game is this? I'll print it any <laughs> color right now. Just let me print something. Tell me there is some ink in the thing. Yeah. Just give me cyan. Can you just do that? <laughs> I'll, I'll like, print it in cyan. It's fine, man. I'll, yeah. I will submit the essay in cyan. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I feel like even now we have problems. <laughs> like we're missing like paper we have one sheet of white paper left are you on talking, that printer right you're there. talking about in this place <laughs> yeah <laughs> if we use that paper yeah. we're done no printing it's is uh it's never been all that much fun yeah i used to recommend people would just use laser printers with uh toner cartridges because they were just simpler mm. in fact i remember my short stint working in, in a computer store i was like do you really need color because I can get you this black and white laser printer. The thing is robust, never breaks, and you got mm. one toner to replace way less frequently. And people, be like, I convince a lot of people. Really? Well, I'll be like, you're not printing photos. Who's really printing photos? Yeah. It's almost all black text. Black, yeah. Anyway, uh, in this, this is one of those weird uh, scenarios where uh, Canon is helping you hack your own device in order to use their own branded ink cartridges without the DRM. So I got a kick out of that. Mm. Uh, Google Pay is offering cash back on YouTube Premium and more. This is just a nice little bonus for people who use, uh, I guess, are thinking of using Google Pay. I was, I was uh, surprised to find out that you can use Google Pay not just on Android, but also on iOS. It's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. I set up Google Pay on that. So, but that's, okay, so you're using iOS right now. Mm -hmm. What's funny to me is, uh, well, I guess you don't want to necessarily set everything back up, but why not just use Apple Pay? Yeah, I iOS? do both. Both? I like to try it out, like okay. different apps. Right. I haven't used iOS in a while, so. That's fine. I give it a shot. Yeah, I, the last time I was in a similar situation was when Samsung Pay used to have some enhancements, and then I would... Sometimes use Samsung Pay and sometimes use Google sure. Google Pay on Android. 
But on iOS, I would just use Apple Pay. Anyway, some promos going on with Google Pay right now um, via cashback and rewards. As of this week, Google Pay is offering cashback promos across various merchant partners, including YouTube Premium and Oyo Hotels. I don't know this hotel chain. Oyo or OYO. If you're a new YouTube Premium subscriber, this is the part I care about because I am a premium subscriber, not a new one. But if I was thinking about subscribing to YouTube Premium, which I like YouTube Premium, mm -hmm. um, you can get three months free with a with your Google Pay promo code. There's some other uh, sites like Zazzle and a couple of other ones where you can get savings as well. And uh, Google Pay offers other ways of earning or saving money. Referrals. You can do referrals. Apparently, I didn't mm. know this, but you can get five bucks back for each person you refer to the app to use it, I guess who sets up an account. And apparently sometimes these referrals go up to $15 at different times. So everybody wants your payments. Sure. They yeah. want you to be using their payment app. I just happen to use Google Pay at the at the moment. Not sponsored. No, yeah, this is not this is not sponsored at all. It's just that happens it's to pretty be the seamless. one happens to be the one that I use and it, yeah, it, still it, like it. it works fine for me. So uh whatever. I don't know. You want YouTube premium? Get a promo. Why not? Three months. Yeah. Elon Musk unveils SpaceX launch and catch tower. Oh, I heard him talking about this on Lex Fried Friedman's podcast. Mm -hmm. How in order to save weight, uh there's the the starship would not have its own landing legs or feet. Instead, it would have to be caught. Yeah. And that's obviously what this is about. The launch tower would pinch, and his his example in the Lex Freeman podcast was like chopsticks. Yeah. Cat, he he used the example of karate kid and chopsticks catching the fly. That's what it is. <laughs> looks like right here <laughs> so the rocket's got to hover in that location and it will be gripped by mm -hmm. this tower what a crazy uh engineering proposal uh, to have the idea is one thing but to manufacture and execute is another and the way that he sounded on a podcast was fully accepting the fact that this is going to fail a few times before it works yeah, but and it's going to be public, most likely. But that's the thing, man. Anything oh, that's... here it is. Here, this, is, this is an animation of what it will look like. Yeah. This is definitely not a video of it actually happening. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> nice little catch. <laughs> Chopsticks. <laughs> man. It's hard to believe that that's worth it from a weight savings perspective, but it sure is nice to watch it lower, lower things down very uh, gracefully. Uh -huh. I just wonder about the ab ab abrasion of those pads on right, the top yeah. side of it that sit on the thing and where it's cr it may be crushing the, yes. the rocket there it's you know? uh oh man I mean, well the whole thing is just absolutely uh mad it's, it's uh, very ambitious it's one of those uh and it does it in two parts as well look at that it's almost kind of like a crane lift for the yeah. audio listeners yep and there's more than one piece to it as well. Yeah. Uh, but apparently it's the best way to do it. And that's the thing. Uh, if you want to do difficult things, you're going to run into difficult problems. But that's the motivating factor. That's what leads you to want to approach it. And uh, that appears to be what's going on here. I don't know when they're going to use it first. Uh, let's see here. The test flight plan calls for Booster 4 to splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. This is a separate... Mm -hmm. uh, it will be the first space flight for Starship after several test flights that stayed much closer to the ground. Okay, that is, they are talking about Starship here. Technical work continues, but the orbital flight date cannot occur until the Federal Aviation Administration wraps up an environmental assessment of Starbase expected to be completed in late 2021, but the FAA recently pushed the target date back to February 28th. Mm -hmm. hmm. So there's a lot of regulation, obviously, and a lot of approvals. With Starship selected as NASA's lander of choice for astronauts participating in the agency's Artemis moon program and a moon orbiting flight targeted for 2023, booked by Japanese billionaire and recent International Space Station visitor Yusaku Mizawa, more testing of Starship should come fairly rapidly after the orbital flight occurs. Man, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Chopsticks catching a fly. Kanye West had someone come shave his beard in the middle of his date with Julia Fox. Mid-date beard shave? 
Yeah. Just touch Don't it up a little that? bit. <laughs> just uh, line it up. Um, yeah. So they set up a little shop in the bathroom <laughs> where Kanye just, uh, he can actually go in there and then get his uh, shave on. And that's it. Is this um, a publicity like a thing? Is it, is it like, uh, I mean, it's obviously unusual. But I wonder if you were already set up, then it, it wasn't an emergency scenario, but instead you were prepared for this. You knew you were going to be doing this. Or is the barber always close by enough that in a pinch you can just, he can be there. And then you just so happen to yeah. take the closest location. I think this was uh, predicted. I think he, he set mm -hmm. it up in a way. He's like, yo, I'll be right back. And, and it is back. a pretty funny kind of thing like he's on a date and then i'll be right back mm -hmm. goes in to the bathroom and then just gets a clean shave mm -hmm. um but apparently yeah they're they're in love there's they're, dating going i don't know if you can say they're in love i mean that seems like a bit of a leap here no okay so this is another story but um apparently kanye west set up like a balenciaga shopping spree for julia fox oh where he set well, up a hotel room that had all of the Balenciaga uh, clothing. Well, that sounds where like... Where she can pick and choose That sounds like love to me. Wants. You know what that sounds like to me? Well, yeah. It sounds like love to me. Exactly. So, yeah, they're they're apparently in so, a deep relationship. Can you scroll down to the second paragraph? Uh, and according to friend Antonio Brown's Instagram stories, the Donda rapper had a makeshift barber shop set up in what appears to be the restaurant's bathroom. In the video, West, who is draped in a black cape, Looks dead ahead as a professional cleaned up his stubble uh, while shuffling dishes and personnel were heard in the short clip. The fashion designer doesn't say a word. Is that on? That looks like Antonio Brown posting the whole thing to stories in front in the front there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, well, that's what you do when you're Kanye West, man. Yeah, why okay, not? That's what you do. Kim Kardashian and Floyd Mayweather sued over alleged crypto scam. I saw Floyd we uh, Mayweather's name trending, and I was wondering what that yeah. was about. The celebrities promoted Ethereum Max before its value fell by 98. This, I mean, more of this is going to go on. There's yeah. so much money at stake. We were talking about the other day, you're seeing crypto stuff pop up in music videos and mainstream people getting associated with it. Uh, I'm not saying, I mean, this was a very specific case, but it's just going more and more mainstream and mm -hmm. uh, more and more celebrities are being approached for projects and they may not know the whole story about them. They may misstep, step on some landmines, get paid a boatload of money in the meantime, and then come to find out that the whole thing is, is uh, rough. But anyway, so you, what do you have here? What are you showing me? Well, yeah, what they're promoting is called Ethereum Max. And um, I was just looking through like what what it is, and this seems to be like the definition of it, which a lot of people don't even know what it is. Uh, let's see. It's difficult to tell from Ethereum Max website exactly what it does. The site promises it will provide access to VIP experiences, including yeah. sporting events and concerts. It also says Ethereum Max holders will receive a two percent yield on every transaction. Ethereum Max wants to be a culture token that will bridge the gap between the emergence of community tokens and the well-known foundational coins of crypto. Management team is unclear. Launched in May of 2021. Market cap, $281 million, roughly. That was in June of 2021. Mm -hmm. You cannot buy Emacs on any major U.S. cryptocurrency exchange, but it is available on some of the decentralized exchanges, not to be confused with Ethereum. And then below that, it's the different celebrities that promoted it. Uh, although does it? Oh, Kim Kardashian Instagram post said, "Are you guys into crypto?" This is not financial advice, but sharing what my friends just told me about the Ethereum Max token. Hashtag Emacs. Hashtag disrupt history. Oh man, so they would have paid her in that case, sure. yeah, between three and five hundred thousand. I mean, at least that's the speculation based on what she would typically get paid for that. And do you remember uh, Floyd May Mayweather's latest? Um, boxing match. Yeah, he, he was promoting it. He had on the match. trunks. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing it on the shorts and just not even thinking about it. I just assumed it was some fringe crypto. It appears to be some fringe crypto, but you have to wonder if you can't get it on any of the major exchanges. Yeah. Okay, go to the website just real quick while we're here. Ethereum Max. Are they still doing it? Like, 
Is it still there? Oh, it is. Yeah, it's .org. It's the next one down because that's an ad you're getting at the top. There you go. So there's still a website, and you got to buy it right on their website. Sure, yeah. Yikes. Okay, I don't... I don't know. I mean, that's the thing right now. 2022, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's so much of it. Well, anyway, okay, so what is the issue for them? They d Just disclosure? Let's see. Class action lawsuit is named Kim Kardashian, Floyd Mayweather, and Paul Pierce as defendants for promoting cryptocurrency called Ethereum Max. Plaintiffs sued the celebrities and unidentified entities behind the tokens. They could sell their portion of the float for a profit. The lawsuit lists anybody who invested in the token between May 14 and June 27 as a defendant. Wow. Anybody who invested in it. Mm -hmm. The coin rose 362% in value after Mayweather and Pierce promoted it. And when he had, he had it on his shorts in a big match. Interesting. Celebrities have been prom promoting cryptocurrency tokens for a while now and even creating their own. Sure. I don't know. I don't know exactly... Uh, what the lawsuit is going to say in it. The token's value plummeted. Well, yeah, of course. The coin's creators allegedly sold off their shares before the price drop. So you're, it's your good old pump and dump scenario. Yeah. I guess people want Classic their rug pull. losses back because they say it's a scam. Can you give well, us a value? Can we see the, the, the drop? Can you give us a chart on it? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's not very accurate here. Oh. Why is it not accurate? What's your, what's your, uh, oh yeah. It like, just looks kind of strange. Like it's not like. Well, a, that's one day. Oh, you got to go to like three months. Yeah. Look where it was. That's a plummet. Yeah. It wasn't like a complete drop as what other people said. Well, it was a complete, it was a complete climb though. It's definitely in a. Like look at how steep the climb was after the promos. Yeah. I mean, it went way up. Boom. Sell. Sell a little more. Move on. I don't know. Listen, I don't know. I'm not making any claims about anything, but I'm just, it's a whole new situation out there as far as the way you got to be looking at this stuff and um, the skepticism that you have to bring to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just be careful out there. That's all I got to say on that. It's a, it's a lot of, a lot of moves taking place that you, oh, yeah. you might not be aware of all the moves that are taking place behind the scenes. So just, uh, have your head screwed on as much yeah, as just possible. Yeah, just be careful, guys. Yeah. Today's sponsor, Cometeer. Wow, was I happy to get these guys on board because I tried this product and I was blown away. I'm a coffee drinker, all right? Many of you already know this. And I want to try all types of different coffee tech that's out there. But these guys did it. They somehow made a convenient coffee experience the coffee process you have these little capsules with this beautiful coffee concentration inside the capsule you drop it into a mug you pour the hot or cold water into it because you want to have an iced coffee as well of course willie do delivering one right now that's how easy it is i mean i can't promise you the willie do aspect of it but Anybody can do this. No special expertise, no special equipment. And for your specific flavor profile, for what you like, the, the types of flavors that you gravitate towards, and the flavor is absolutely going to blow you away. I guarantee it. I'm going to take a sip. You're going to be shocked that you made that. You're going to be shocked that all you did was pour hot water on that, and it tastes like that. It's a, it, it tastes like something that you purchase at a fine cafe standing there watching a master at work with the brewing process. You don't need to do any of it. It is a better cup of coffee for most people. I promise you that. It's magic what they're doing in these capsules. You recycle it after. No big deal. Cup at a time. Such low commitment. If you love coffee, you are going to love Cometeer. For a limited time, Cometeer has a special offer to our listeners of the later. Right now, you can get $20 off your first purchase if you go to cometeer.com slash later. That's 10 free capsules of coffee and always free shipping. Thank you to Cometeer. Kanye West is planning a trip to meet with President Vladimir Putin. 
and perform first ever show in Russia with Sunday service. I could see those two. <laughs> I could see them uh, getting a photo together or something. Yeah. Posting I would it. imagine it'd be like, uh, <laughs> what, Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong Un? Well, this Kim is. A, I think this is a little bit less controversial. Russia's accessible. North Korea is just mm -hmm. seems tough to get in and out of. I guess because of the um, conflict. Yeah, I mean, you know? yeah. You ever see in North Korea when they have that little overlap zone with South Korea, and they have to do, mm -hmm. they try to have a talk, and it's like this really strongly militarized area. Yeah. They're all holding guns, both sides. I mean, I guess Russia's probably got some regions like that, too. The 46-year-old rapper will also perform his first ever show in Moscow with his Christian Sunday service gospel. That seems to line up. There's a big, uh, um, big Jesus uh, Catholic element in Russia as well. Sure. H history there. Uh, his performance will likely be at the Cro Crocus City Hall Theater or the Grand Sports Arena, where much of the 1980 Olympic Games were held. He's looking forward to make making Russia a second home, as sources told Billboard that Kanye deflected issues with strict travel sanctions between Russia and the United States as tensions rise amid a conflict with Ukraine. I guess he's hit it off with uh, Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Uh, he's expanding his business empire to Russia. I mean, maybe he wants to sell the Yeezy stuff over there. Yeah, I mean they don't say when, but um, this is a crazy. This is a weird story. It's it's who's telling us this? You know what I mean? <laughs> did, did Kanye himself say it somewhere? What is the source of this? He said he was planning to go. Oh, he did say that. Yeah, and close wow. sources said that no matter what he um, travel restrictions, because the U.S. don't recommend Americans yeah, yeah, to yeah, go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Kanye said he's gonna make his way regardless. Kanye's strategic advisor Kanye or uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yay. Sorry, I had to just put that in there. He, Cause he's formally official, known as officially Kanye changed West. his name. Well, you know, what's funny is I saw on Google, it changes the suggestion for the topic around Kanye to yay. Oh, no way. Yeah. They updated it. It's yay. Kanye's strategic advisor, Amir Sudan, uh, you guys scroll down and lawyer Scott Balber are coordinating the trip. Balber is also acting as a liaison for his clients. Azerbaijani Russian billionaire real estate developer Aras Agalarov and his son Amin Agalarov. Huh. He plans to invite Putin to attend the gospel performance. Very interesting. And the reason that the U.S. Department of State has put Russia on level four do not travel is because of COVID? And related entry restrictions. Mm -hmm. They also put terrorism, harassment, and so forth. Also. Beef. This is general. General, general beef. General beef and yeah. uh, sensitivity and uh, Facebook and whatever else people have been talking about <laughs> Russia. With. You know what I mean? Like the Russia topic of, uh, of recent years. But I'm sure Ye is going to do fine getting in and out of Russia. I really wonder if he's going to bring his choir as well. Well, he's got to I mean, otherwise it's not the Sunday service, right? Well, he can grab people from Russia. Hey, man. Right. You act like it's like interchangeable <laughs> Sunday service. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, it would be hard to bring the whole crew there. Well, he right? just get a whole jet, man. You're talking about yay right here. He and could, and yeah. Putin. I mean, he's done it before, between actually. The, between the two of them and the, and the lawyer, Balber. He's, he's connected to uh, a bi the billionaire, uh, Azerbaijani Russian billionaire real estate developer, Aras Aglavarov. There's so many people involved <laughs> in the billions here. Yeah. They're going to figure it out, man. They're going to get a whole plane together. Mm -hmm. And Connie's not worried about those tensions. He's expanding the business empire over there into, into Russia. He get, should live stream it and have Putin going. just like sit there. And just watch. Yeah. Or do experience think, it himself. Do you think Putin stays for the whole thing or he just pops in? I'm sure he'll stay. For the Kanye whole made thing? his whole way there. For, for the whole thing? Talking about Putin? I mean, it's a couple hours, right? I feel like he pops in. Okay. I, I don't know. Maybe not. All right. This is a weird one. I had to double take this and read it a couple times because okay. it was recently trending. 
Zayn Malik, who is uh, formerly One Direction. The, yeah, uh, the, very popular band. The the group with, with that has now has disbanded. Uh huh. Anyway, so uh, this guy apparently, and and who who even knows? This one just says Zayn Malik signs up to a plus size dating site to find a curvy and fuller woman. Three months after his split with Gigi Hadid. Hadid. Oh, really? It's a plus size dating app. Like it's, specifically. Specifically. Mm -hmm. And I was at first I was saying, well, maybe this guy just that they found the the clip of maybe it just looks like him. But then you read a little more and you see the name on the site, and it was a fit. It was it was Z, yeah, Z E D. Yeah. The dating app called Woo Plus, and then there's a video clip because apparently it uses facial recognition on the site, and you have to go through these. Uh, different stages to have it recognize your face and he obviously has a, a longer beard here from your typical uh videos you've seen of him okay yeah i can't pause it without uh i was gonna go back and forth but but it's i, I, I don't i don't know how anyone can say for certain that it's him like 100 percent. but it's, oh, here we go. it's still making news well they're saying see in that page they say it's alleged alleged yeah alleged i don't know do you see it? Well, I'm trying to also figure out why it's such a big deal. I mean, I realize he just split up and it's kind of unusual to find somebody of this stature. I think he has 44 million followers on Instagram. Oh, I, actually, you know what? I might be convinced already. That it's him? Because of the tattoos. It, it sure looks like him, man. Just the neck tattoos here. It definitely. Based on these ones? It here, definitely looks like him. that little shape. Hey man, it's <laughs> no. I mean, the qu here's the question. Here's the question. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> here's, here's the real question: Is are how can we be like? Are we certain? Well, there's a lot of questions. Okay, so it could be him, and he could be actually doing the thing. The story could be completely accurate, and he's sure trying to get on this dating site, the plus size dating site. Yeah. Or it could be. A stunt of some kind like wouldn't it be funny if they find me on this site like some, uh -huh. somebody's gonna notice but then in that case his beard i don't think publicly has ever been that long mm -hmm. um because this would be an amazing publicity for yeah, that dating. he could just be trolling no no but imagine you're that dating site you're everywhere you're all over the place this article goes today oh yeah it's called woo woo plus w-o-o -O plus i believe yeah that's the name of it Woo plus, like we just said it. How many times I say it? Everybody who's reporting on this is saying it. Um, and then people go a step further and they try to find a comment he said years ago about that he also he likes curvy women, mm. which is what the site is. So like, oh, it's definitely him. Yeah, you're gonna get matched up with him if you go on this site. And to me, that is one one heck of a marketing campaign for that dating app. That you got this uh, celebrity on there, One Direction. Yeah, very meta. I mean, it's a way to do it. It's a way to do it. Sure. Uh, why bother doing a whole commercial when you can get the press for free? Just put them in the app. Mm -hmm. It's next next level embedded uh, marketing over there. Yeah. But anyway, that's not official either. We're just talking. Officially, what we seem to know is there's a video clip going around from that app. And uh, that seems to be the gist of it at the moment. It's also a weird one because he's doing the facial expression. They're not the most appealing facial expression. No. Hey, are you looking at those there? Hey. Huh? I think it's supposed to be fun because yeah. you're trying to match the emojis. Yeah. Yeah. Well. It's interesting. The video clip starts before the smile as well. Right? You don't get to see. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, no. There's a smile. Okay. There you go. Yeah, well, I mean, what is the lesson learned? The lesson learned is uh, you might have 44 million followers and uh, you're still trying to find a, find a date, I guess. Yeah, he's looking for love. After you break up with uh, Gigi over there. Yeah. Oh, yes, update. Okay, there's an update to the uh, Joe Rogan, CNN, 
video clip conspiracy. Okay, let's hear it. Because we talked about it the other day, and, you know, I was going back and forth. I was going upside down on this topic, Mm -hmm. trying to think, how could this have happened? What's going on? How can it look so strange what they posted versus the original clip? And, uh, of course, the comment section, and since there was so much back and forth that it was already going on between CNN and Rogan, and there seemed to be some animosity or um, some questions around uh, lying and so forth. It was easy to jump to conclusions. It was also easy, I think, for people to assume that there could be intent here. Mm -hmm. However, being... Uh, uh, having a lot of experience with different smartphones and particularly with iPhones and the way the aggressiveness of the HDR on the front facing camera Mm -hmm. that I was aware of, I started in that original clip to look at the bottom clip and say, okay, there's already funky stuff going on. Sure. Right. And like, I could just tell the, the, the way it was attempting to, uh, flatten his face a little bit and bring down the highlight in the area Mm -hmm. i could kind of spot it so i was like okay so so what he shot in an iphone or he you know he shot it with the uh, automatic hdr but i had seen a couple of comments on the video saying hey this is like a technical thing to do with whoever and however the video was ripped from instagram so apparently what happened and again, this is according, you can go on Reddit. Just just, just go ahead and type this in right now. Type in uh, Joe Rogan, CNN, and uh, Filter, and Instagram. What appears to have taken place, according to this variety of threads and everyone who's talked about it here, what seems to have happened is that actually Instagram applied the filter. Because Instagram did not know or has been struggling with dealing with HDR content. Hmm. And there's a, uh, a GIF that I saw that was showcasing how actually that filter had been applied and existed on Instagram for a period of time before Instagram removed the filter. Is it this one? Now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be one of these threads. You'll, you'll see about it. What does this change about the story? Well, it changes uh, quite a bit because it means that, see, okay, a couple things here. First of all, you could look at Instagram and say, hey, why is is Instagram applying filters to HDR content in the first place? Mm -hmm. And what kind of incentive might there be there? Or is it just strictly technical, which is probably the case? But does that completely absolve CNN of the responsibility of attempting to fix the color once they've downloaded and said, hey, this looks a little off and not like the original? Or does anyone at CNN even know that there's an original that looks different because the time at which they went to download the clip from Instagram, it just looked like that and they just assumed, okay, that's what it looks like. Yeah. I mean, just looking at the CNN footage, if you weren't... um kind of seeing it side by side or you're just watching it on the TV. um, It looks normal. Right? Well, it obviously, it it looks acceptable, I would say. Acceptable. If you were to show it to me exclusively, I'd be like, he does look a little off. You think so? Color balance. Yeah, for sure. But if you're watching it on a, a TV that probably has some sort of boost in saturation, you probably didn't even think nothing of it. Because uh, TVs are known to do that, right? Just boost the saturation. Just me, the way I look at this stuff, okay, I'd be fine. saying this looks like an HDR problem, right? Which okay. was my initial instinct. But when Joe posted the clip of the two of them side by side, then it was obvious how different it was. And then I also wondered, okay, Joe knows what the original clip looked like. And if you go back to his page on Instagram, it will look like the bottom because in the meantime, apparently... Instagram removed whatever filter attempted to be automatically applied. Right. Instagram itself knew something was off, I guess, or uh, distributed some sort of a a fix for how it was treating HDR content from the iPhone. So there's a real iPhone story here, and 
and technology story here about the interaction between our devices and social media and decisions that are being made uh, on our behalf in an attempt to enhance things like our skin at the point of fo uh, the photo taking place, mm -hmm. which, of course, I've done videos on in the past about how different people show up differently. And like in my face, it looks like I'm sort of wearing makeup and you can't fully turn it off. Yeah. On iPhone. And then our social media uh, platforms attempting that uh, on their own to enhance things in ways that we might not also even want or like. So there's the original. And you'll see it looks okay now. But if you just, just go back to Reddit for a quick second, I know I'm getting all fired up here, but I knew something weird was going on. And, and, and go back, uh, go down, yeah, scroll down to the actual uh, commentary here. Um... There's a reasonable explanation. So click on that. And this is probably the thread which I was uh, reading here. Notice how quickly the color changes when I press play. Do that link at the very top there. There you go. This one? Yep. So this is the difference between how the clip is supposed to look or looked on his phone versus what Instagram did to it. And that is what... CNN ended up publishing. Now, you could argue that CNN has some sort of responsibility to try to color correct it, but watch. This was the original filter that took place on Instagram according to this variety of clips that people were able to screen capture. And I've seen GIFs uh, showcasing the same thing, and it's from multiple people. That the first frame looks okay, and then some sort of processing or filter hmm. kicks in that creates this green, this bizarre green hue in an attempt to deal with HDR content being supplied to it. Huh. So this ended up getting a lot more technical than the, the uh, much more fun and uh, entertaining uh, explanations. Sure. But it doesn't change the fact that even if I put that on my timeline, I'd be like, why does he look like that? Like, what exactly happened here? And um, it's an iPhone? I Is he using an iPhone? I presume... Based on the way that HDR looks, that would be my best guess. You can just ask him. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we DM could. Get, him or I'm sure I could DM him. And we could get to the bottom of it, but yeah. I don't. That think is I, interesting. I don't though. even think I have to because I see enough evidence here um, of uh, screen captures and, uh, to to uh, provide enough insight that okay, it was like that for a period of time. Right. The other thing, the thing that's wild is that Instagram patched it. They were like, uh-oh, it's going to be a big deal here in a minute. Oh, because of this. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily because of this. There probably were plenty of complaints that, hey, why am I green? Right. What's going on with my HDR footage? And they were uh, uh, probably attempting to fix whatever auto filter crap was going on there. Hmm. This is very interesting. Yeah. So anyway, you can read the comments on our original one if you're curious, but there's a lot of people going back and forth saying... There's such a thing as broadcast safe color that would have led to maybe a little bit more manipulation, but probably not the whole way. Uh, but either way, uh, I feel like this is an Instagram issue. And if you want to go conspiracy theory, then you kind of have to look at what Instagram was doing with, with HDR content and people's skin and all the rest of it at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to consider it. And you can still decide where it is that you want to place blame, but it's obviously far more complex here and uh, a much bigger conversation around uh, our devices and our platforms and our software making decisions about how things should look or could look better as opposed to necessarily looking as accurate as possible. It's scary when it's uh, fully automated mm -hmm. where you don't have any control. Turn, like what do I do with all these phones? I turn off all the processing. I turn off all the beauty modes and everything else. Right away. Yeah. What um, if you don't have a choice for that even? Well, on iPhone, you don't. On iPhone, you yeah. can try to uh, t tone it down, but you can never really get rid of it. I made a whole video about this ages ago. Sure. Uh, anyway, okay. So so we have a new, uh, some new spy shots of an upcoming potential, upcoming 2024 Cadillac Escalade. What's different here is that this is apparently could be a V model, Escalade V, which hmm. is interesting because... 
up until this point, these vehicles have been relatively sluggish. They have not been very fast SUVs, and they exist for the purpose of moving a lot of stuff or people around in luxury. Uh, so it's had 420 horsepower in the past. I've, I've had one of these. Uh, it's not, these are not really that much of a joy to drive. They're smooth and comfortable, but they're not, they don't uh, accelerate very quickly because they're super heavy. But in the past, Cadillac ha has a, has had like V series vehicles, but they were sedans. Hmm. They were cars. They never did a V version of the very popular SUV, Cadillac SUV, the es Escalade. So the thinking here is that they would have a V8 version with uh, over 600 horsepower, and it would actually be fairly quick. Wow, what a beast. So um, what, what are these cars used for? Is it meant for, like, families or traveling? An Escalade? I mean, yeah, it, yeah it's just a, like a, it's a luxury SUV. I mean, the airport limo Uber types love them as well, obviously. It's a luxurious way to be driven around, but... Yeah, but I see them on the road. They're massive. Escalades? Yeah. Yeah. They just roll over everything. Yeah, I mean, it's a big four-wheel drive, three-row seating... They do uh, look nice though. Truck with a with a large truck, and then and then you have the e the e extended ESV model, which has an even uh, longer tail on it. Which actually, I think this one in the picture is the shorter model. But anyway, if you scroll down, we can see some of the other specs that you would expect to see on this if it does uh, come to be. Uh, scroll down a little bit further. Yeah, so supercharged V8 making. 668 horsepower. Now that's, I guess, currently exists in the CT5V Blackwing. That's the sedan. But they've done, uh, they've done different fast sedans in the past with this mm. type of this type of naming. I think it's important right now. Everybody's expecting all things luxury, performance, all of the above, and electric vehicles seem to have accelerated that. You want everything to be responsive, including your enormous uh, Escalade. So anyway, this could be our first uh, glimpse at what that might look like. You can play a little bit of the video if you want. There's a video clip right there of the spy shots. It's all wrapped in black at this point. And they try to make it difficult to tell what it is. But it recent, I don't wish I don't, it's kind of weird because it recently got facelifted. So there must be some exterior performance elements that they're hiding as well. Maybe a couple cameras. What do you mean? just around like the body that they want to hide maybe it's like a feature oh yeah 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 there, there could be there could be um i don't know self drive I don't. yeah there could be safety and autonomous stuff or yeah. or it could just be like that they're going to do the grill differently because it's the performance model there could mm -hmm. be like trim pieces that are ever so slightly different because it's the performance model and they're just trying to to hide those components but this is what they do frequently Man, I feel like in Apocalypse, I would totally ride this thing. <laughs> yeah, it'd be comfy. Like, it's so rugged and, like, yeah, armored. It, um, no, no, it will look more polished eventually, but you're right. Well, yeah. In its, in its spy safe mode, it looks very post-apocalyptic. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Very cool. Oh, yeah, inflation. This was a trending topic, and it's one of those moments where I think a lot of people have recognized that things have gotten more expensive but haven't really pinpointed it or it's a hard thing to pinpoint uh there's been all all types of shortages and covid has gone on forever and then people are like hey is stuff more expensive than it was hmm. uh, it turns out yes stuff is more expensive december prices rise seven percent compared to a year ago uh as 2021 inflation reaches highest in 40 years yeah. The, the crypto type types love these stories. The whole the whole printing of the money and such. Hedging and inflation. And getting getting less for your hard earned. Um, I don't know if they're happy about American it. American dollars. <laughs> well, no, it's always the argument, right? Is yeah. is that is that uh, it's not limited. Like you can it can, can it can keep. Yeah, it's not a fixed supply. Yeah, it can go on forever and ever. Officials sure. within the Fed and Biden administration expect high inflation will persist through much of 2022. Uh, there's some examples in this article, I believe, of uh, things that have gone. Actually, is that a chart? I like the look of that chart. Shelter, 
food, energy, used vehicles has been a huge one. Used vehicles, I believe, have increased in like like 30%. Uh, the cost has been inflated something like 30%. It's because of the chip shortages, a lot of that. Um, so people were in the market for vehicles. They couldn't get vehicles. Mm. And uh, so it drove, it helped to drive prices up. But of course, this is I mean, macro scale, all types of reasons why you've, you've got consumer inflation. Very complex thing to analyze. But if... I mean, I'm sure you've had this experience, just anecdotally here, Will, hmm. where you've been out shopping, you'd be like, hey, that's a little bit, maybe you got the, maybe you were getting a combo at McDonald's or something, you're like, hey, maybe that's a little more, I don't know. Well, yeah, it's very applicable to me. Does it ever? I notice the prices. Are you a guy, you and know, they always you, go up. You would notice that. Mm -hmm. Especially like uh, this month. This month? these past couple of months. Oh, yeah. interesting. You're noticing very, couple cents. Yeah. very specific over here. <laughs> of course, we're talking about Canada. This is the U.S., but obviously similar yeah, uh, yeah. things take place. Prices rose at the fastest pace in four decades in December, increasing 7% over the same period uh, compared to the same period a year ago. Prices were also up 0.5% in December compared to the month before. So they just keep going up. Rapid increase in costs. On an annual basis, 2021 still saw the fastest price inflation since the early 1980s, where broken supply chains collided with high consumer demand for used cars and construction materials is the one I keep hearing. People mm. tell me, man, I'm just trying to buy lumber. Why? It's like a two by four. Exactly. It's and like the, 90 bucks. The lumber fluctuates from day to day in, in quite a, a wide range. Higher prices seeped into just about everything in households and businesses, uh, raising alarms for policymakers to the Federal Reserve and the White House. Inflation has spread throughout the economy and it could be a top threat to the economic recovery from the pandemic. Yeah. So anyway, you're not alone. If you're noticing these prices going up, uh, you've got a uh, good reason. You're not going crazy. Things have probably gone up in price depending on which uh, segment it is you're talking about. You let, let, let me know. I'm curious in the comments something that you, you may have noticed has gone up uh, big time. In terms of uh, cost, I'd be curious. Uh, yeah, this Adam Sandler story. This was 500,000 searches yesterday. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> Why is Adam Sandler dead? I think because Adam Sandler uh, is a beloved guy. Right. He's done so much for, I guess, uh, comedy, film. And he spans generations. Like People know him mm -hmm. from different generations because he's been around and had success a number of times. Uh, yeah, so I guess it was another one of these hoaxes, which are always kind of bizarre to me. Uh, it, you will take a given celebrity. I guess it's not bizarre. I mean, people will do whatever they, whatever they, mm -hmm. they deem to be entertaining or fun, including uh, having a hoax and watching it spread. The hoax in this case is Adam Sandler is dead. You post on social media. People start to... Wonder if it's true or not, and then they say uh, rip, and they say I'm so sad, and it starts to fly. And I've been, it's I mean, recently we've had real deaths in the in the comedy community. Uh, Bob, Bob Saget. Saget, and you start to see how like how powerful these moments are, and and how many people gather around to talk about it and to. Um, uh, you know, sort of grieve collectively and, and such. And you will see these topics just uh, accelerate and take off. And so I don't know if there's any correlation there where it was like uh, somehow a reaction to some of those recent deaths, like uh, not even just comedy. Uh, what was her name? Betty White. Yeah. Betty White was another one. I just, it's so many people all at once talking about one topic and... Uh, remembering an individual and it's sort of, I can see how uh, a group that wanted to do something, do a hoax could be inspired at this time right now because they're like, oh, we can do this. We can pull this off. Let's do Adam Sandler or whatever. And what's even more meta is that they can attribute COVID to be the case too. COVID is out to there lingering. The Scary COVID is always lingering. The Hollywood actor caused a panic after unknowing fans caught wind of the videos that alleged he had drowned or been in a fatal accident. 
It turns out the social media users were simply taking part in a madcap trend of telling people Sandler was dead while filming their reaction. Yeah. So the majority of people responded to the fake news of the treasured New York natives passing by becoming visibly upset and shocked. But it has been confirmed that the Happy Gilmore star is very much alive. You know what's funny? He made news recently because he couldn't get a table at a mm -hmm. Denny's or a I think IHOP. It was, a it was an IHOP. IHOP, yeah. <laughs> he makes news for the funniest reasons recently. Or he's just playing basketball sometimes. Which he's really good at. Yeah, he got turned away at an IHOP. And then he went and confirmed because he's wearing a mask. He confirmed it was him. And he confirmed uh -huh. uh, he didn't have time to wait for a table. Yeah. So he left. It's he's a yeah he's a he's got some unusual news stories about himself recently. Yeah, he's got a new film coming out, a basketball film called Hustle, and you know he's been into basketball big time. He teamed up with LeBron James Production Company to work on the film. It's uh, it's being kept under wraps, mm -hmm. he's, but he's been keeping a low profile. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, oh, he he even gave a tribute. To Bob Saget, apparently on his Instagram. Great, mm -hmm. great man, funny as hell, such a nice person. Love to Bob and his whole family. So there you go. U.S. man is recovering after a breakthrough transplant with a pig heart. Now this one, I saw this headline. A lot of people were talking about This is actually wild. I mean, just stop and think for a second. You're walking around with a pig heart. You're actually... Uh, uh, utilizing a pig's organ in your body and it's functioning a very important task. Mm -hmm. It's fu functioning as a very important organ, maybe the most important organ. I don't know, your heart? Yeah. And the body's not rejecting mm -hmm. and uh, it's pumping away. Yeah. I mean, tremendous, man. No, this is uh, an amazing feat of health science when you if you are one of these people waiting for a heart transplant or a donor or uh, you're in uh, desperate need a u.s man with terminal heart disease was implanted with a genetically modified pig heart in the first of its kind surgery and three days later the patient is doing well his doctors reported the surgery performed by a team at the university of maryland medicine is among the first to demonstrate the feasibility of a pig-to-human heart transplant, a field made possible by new gene-editing tools. This was a breakthrough surgery and brings us one step closer to solving the organ shortage crisis. There are simply not enough donor human hearts available to meet the long list of potential recipients. Well, not too much, you know, it's obvious why. Mm. To get a heart donor... Yeah, someone has to... Die. I mean, that's, and they have to be an organ donor and it has to be a fit and it, the timing is, has to be in, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, to, human hearts available to meet the long list of potential recipients. Uh, that comes from Dr. Bartley Griffith, who, who is the one who surgically implanted the pig heart into the patient. So they're proceeding cautiously, but I guess they're doing the gene editing. So are they doing the CRISPR stuff? Whatever it is, it's an, you're talking about a new technology. I guess in order to um, allow this foreign organ to be feasible for this purpose, the FDA used our data and data on the experimental pig to authorize the transplant in an end-stage heart disease patient who had no other transplant options. Wow. wow. Hope. There's 110,000 Americans currently waiting for an organ transplant, and more than 6,000 patients die each year. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, here we go. The genetically modified pig heart was provided by Revivacore, a regenerative med medicine company based in Blacksburg, Virginia. On the morning of the surgery, the transplant team removed the pig's heart and placed it into a special device to preserve its function until the surgery. Unbelievable stuff. They and edited away potentially harmful genes. Is there anything terrible about this? 15 in any way? Million. Research grants to a value. No, I think everybody's going to trade a pig for a human. I think everyone's going to just be completely fine with that. And you got to think, like I said, about the alternative. You know, in the past, you got to uh, try to retrieve these organs mm -hmm. in really from really rough circumstances. Um, I, I mean, obviously, it's going to be difficult. You don't know like long-term, 
But in this mm -hmm. guy's case, it was terminal, right? He was in the last stage, I guess, of heart disease. And yeah. so he's shutting down and he's mm -hmm. desperate. And I understand it's part of a new technology. Somebody stands to gain or earn some big, sure. big money in this whole thing. But, uh, you know, science and technology, man, it's... Let me tell you something. You're the guy lying on the table with stage four. Yeah. You see that pig walking by? You're like, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. <laughs> I got I got stuff to do. You got people you got people you love. In some yeah. cases, you got people you got to take care of and, and, and all this stuff. I think it's a really cool story, it, too. It's very cool. A pig saved my life. I wonder if there's any uh, uh, repercussions for this guy. Oh, you going you going Marvel movie <laughs> status over here? You going to the Marvel movie? He becomes Pigman. You're going to the Marvel movie. He hates bacon now. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Will. Jeez. John Cena calls his own NFT sales a catastrophic failure. <laughs> Poor guy. World Wrestling Entertainment offered 500 gold tier packages with Cena's NFT for 1,000, but only a fraction of them sold. Yeah. Isn't this interesting? This NFT stuff. How? You, uh, some things seemingly almost mm. organically turn into major hype, and then you get other things which already got some legs on them. Yeah, like like John Cena or Ubisoft. Yeah, you know, and then and then you can't sell it because for some reason the communities don't align in the way mm -hmm. that you expect, um, or at all. It is very interesting. Uh, but I knew that John Cena was interested in the idea of NFTs, and obviously the WWE would be paying attention because the NBA appeared to pull it off. Like, why did they pull it off? What did they do differently? Yeah. Now, maybe this has to do with the product itself. Maybe this has to do with timing. Uh, I know the Top Shot stuff was pretty early mm -hmm. uh, for the NBA, so they got a lot of credit for having been, um, you know, early adopters. Sure. People love that in the tech. But... Let's see. Let's see. Uh, scroll down a little bit here. Uh, professional wrestler and actor John Cena said fans only purchased seven point four percent of his mm -hmm. NFTs that were made available last month. He was speaking at SuperCon twenty twenty one and said it was a mistake to market his WWE NF NFTs as part of a package with physical collectibles: a hat, shirt, wristband, belt, towel, autograph, picture, and the digital collect collectible. The organization offered five hundred gold tier packages. I talk a lot about failure. This idea failed. Myself and the folks in the WWE thought 1000 was a fair price. We were wrong. We were absolutely wrong. We sold 37 Wow. I mean, I like that he's talking about it. Yeah. That's kind of cool. But yeah, maybe they just missed it ever so slightly. They released two NFTs, the 24-hour auction of the John Cena Platinum NFT and the 500 limited edition NFTs uh, as part of the package. The Platinum sold for 21000 Highest bidder got VIP tickets. I don't know, man. It seems to me that you, if you want to get into the NFT thing, then you have to respect the NFT rules. And you have to pay attention, uh -huh. seemingly, to the other projects that are working and what the mechanics of those projects are, particularly around community, particularly around the number of collectibles and... Uh, for, well, I mean, obviously, we've seen so many examples of uh, computer-generated, AI-generated stuff. Like, I think you just have to be paying attention to what has been working in NFTs. Mm -hmm. And he might be right. This connection between physical goods and then NF having the NFT as a bonus, just for whatever reason, doesn't seem to translate or be applicable mm -hmm. to the type of... Uh, groups that you would be marketing such a thing at and then there's also the argument that hey maybe it just isn't as much crossover as you imagined mm -hmm. the nft and crypto community and the wwe community and maybe it's going to take time sure it's a possibility as well yeah here we have some numbers uh ronaldo messi and neymar which footballer earned the most money from instagram in 2021 so who uh I guess that's like a total figure, but I, it, it also probably says what a post is going to cost you. What do you think it would, before you scroll down, because I already looked at this article, mm. if you want to get, if Willie Do wants to get a post to promote the, let's say the Lou Later show on Ronaldo's Instagram account, what do you think you're going to pay for that? Um, One post? Yeah, just one post, just one promotion, man. 
But he's got like I think three hundred million followers on Instagram, something like that. I'm gonna say <laughs> maybe two hundred G's. But you're not bad. You're not okay. bad. It's about five. I think it's about half a million pounds, British pounds. This oh, is written wow. in, in okay. pounds. But uh, this has a whole list of, and it, of course this is an estimate. They're just guessing, but they have the top twenty. And you have the total ter uh, earned number in British pounds. And then you also have the per post number in British pounds. So you can scroll okay. all the way down to the bottom to see those top dudes. Uh, coming in in second place is going to be Messi. Yeah, you have Beckham is still there. Uh, 2.742 million pounds. I'm sure these are guesses. I don't mean no one's sharing these numbers uh, publicly. Ronaldinho, Neymar, there's a huge jump there. For the top three guys, there's another big jump between three and two. Uh, Lionel Messi, 17,192,000 pounds and uh, a cost of around 400,000 pounds per Instagram post. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're very close. Ronaldo is 19 million pounds. Oh. Now remember, this is they're, they're suggesting that this is the money earned just off Instagram. It's not including any type of a external Sponsored deals endorsements yeah. that are not on instagram or uh, obviously as well your sa their salary from playing the sport uh the per post cost five hundred and sixty two thousand pounds is wow. what you would have to pay for uh, cristiano ronaldo to to uh, promote your twitter account he oh yeah some of the brands by the way that uh ronaldo was promoting herbal life therabody and of course, a lifetime sponsor, Nike, was on there as well. He has 389 million hmm. uh, followers, at least at this moment right now. I think he also has his own brand and there's probably plenty more to be promoted on your Instagram account, Will. You have that many followers. Uh, I'm very surprised at this number. Which number? The uh, Instagram post number. The per post number? The total. Yeah, it's like Kim Kardashian. It's a lot. Kim Kardashian is very similar to that. <laughs> Am I crazy? That's a lot Am of I crazy? Money. Am I crazy? Yeah. No, it is. Like, and he has these other businesses, and he has endorsements, and he gets paid uh, mm -hmm. playing football. And it's just like, man, it's a wrong profession. For you? Yeah, <laughs> you should go kick a ball, all right? I should, yeah. Uh, and listen, it, it's, it's one of the most followed accounts in the world. So regardless of what he happens to do for a living, mm -hmm. Um, it's just, I mean, where are you going to put a post to 400 million people? Mm -hmm. If you need a post quickly to 400 million people, you got to go talk to Ronaldo. Yeah. He'll take care of you. I wonder if crypto.com is going to get this guy. Oh, yeah. Crypto's I'm curious. Gonna, crypto will get these guys, man. Come on. Yeah. Crypto got unlimited cash. Okay. All right. To wrap it up, we got a couple of basketball clips, and not necessarily because of the basketball that's going on, but actually some other interesting things that occurred in these games, unrelated sure. to the game itself, or at least not immediately related. So the first one is uh, this uh, end of game sequence. This was a game between the uh, Memphis Grizzlies and the Golden State Warriors. And you got to scroll back up to the top. You got the wrong play here. I know it's a very beautiful dunk there, but uh, it's the where did you where did this tweet go? It's a very specific tweet we need here. I was just looking at media. Oh, okay, yeah. So scroll a little bit more. We're going to find it here. A little bit more. There it is. This is it here. So 245,000 views on Twitter. It's a 49-second clip. So uh, this is the end game sequence. There's 34 seconds left. I mean, I guess it's not a game winner because it's 113 to 108. And this guy who's been taking over the, the league, Morant, he, he has this left-handed lay-in, very tough lay-in. And kind of, it's kind of like a dagger, puts the game away. But what's interesting is the game takes place in Memphis and he's celebrating, kind of goes into the crowd. And then the key here is if you look at the frame, is those two kids right there in the, in the Golden State jersey. There you can see they've locked eyes. <laughs> oh boy. Now you're in Memphis, but they are just kids. Sure. But he kind of mean mugs them a little bit. <laughs> He kind of mean mugs the kids a little bit uh, and says a few words. 
And the kids, if you go back and pause that frame right there, they both have their hands out for uh, a high five. Now, there's more that happened in this. <laughs> and he just turns Poor his head. Guy. He's like, no. He's like, I don't care that you're kids. You got the wrong jersey. Get on my face. But here's the thing. Well, okay. The kid on the right, he's holding some kind of Go Warriors uh, bobble thing. It's like a balloon that you shake. And he's got okay. the full, he's got the full Steph Curry outfit on. It could be Clay Thompson. But either way, he's got the full Golden State outfit on. When the bucket goes in, he slaps the thing out of anger on the uh, the fence in front of him. At, right after it goes in. Goes in. Watch him. Watch him. Bam! You saw it? Yeah. You he going like this, bam, like damn. But look how quickly things change when the player approaches into the crowd. Then he's got his hand out to say, "Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's cool." It goes to show you the kid's mindset, right? <laughs> you know, kids don't really know what they're doing. They're like, "I've been a fan of Steph Curry since I was a kid. Since before you were in the league, you're 22 years old, man. Yeah. I know I'm from Memphis, but like." And this guy's ice cold. <laughs> he's absolutely ice cold. Uh, but anyway, what do you think? Well, should he have, should he have uh, made an exception here and given a high five? It could have, no, it, it no. could have also been iconic for him to give yeah. a high five to sure. give to give a high five to the Steph Curry kid. But I think when you're in that moment as the player, you're too fired up. You're just really competitive. Yeah. And yeah, I I think this is good for him. <laughs> For the you know, kid? The, no, for everyone. <laughs> oh, okay. For everyone. Like uh, okay. the kid gets attention, he gets attention. Yeah. We're talking about it. Like, yeah. Well, there's a lot. It of... just kind of shows like he's in that mindset to win. And no matter what That's the fair. cost, like this I, is war. I like that. I like that. You know? No, man. I hey, I, I can go with I can go there with you too. And there's a lot of replies in the comments that are just hilarious because of this exchange. Uh people people have gotten the perfect grabs from the ideal moments in that. You'll see a couple. Well, there's there only you go. six. Mean, mean mugging. <laughs> oh, this is the one. Uh, that's the main frame. Mean mugging those kids with the crying face. Yeah, over there. There you go. Yeah. That's the key moment right there. Uh, anyway, there's one more from the NBA. This was local. It was actually a Raptors game. They were playing uh, the Phoenix Suns, and uh, Devin Booker was at the line. Another close game. He had some key free throws to hit at the end, and he sort of stopped what he was doing, and... Uh, signaled to get the mascot out of the way. Right. Uh, meanwhile, in Toronto, there's there's no crowds in the audience. It's still COVID, still uh, going strong over here, apparently. So there was one guy in the crowd doing his job, which is the mascot, trying to just hype out. You just, just hype out. Just do like, something. Yeah. And and uh, Booker was like, Nah, get out of there. You're distracting me. <laughs> He's like, okay, fine. And so he had to kind of go kneel down. <laughs> he had to go kneel down out of the way in an apologetic stance. And uh, then Booker was interviewed after, and he said that they squashed it and, and they're fine. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he it, it's unusual to see a player react because normally you would have a whole crowd going crazy trying to get you to miss the free throw. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting to me is that might be easier to deal with than one distracting item. Yeah. In the crowd. I, I agree. I agree. Because the raptor, that. the red raptor kind of gets lost in the crowd mm -hmm. because there's so much movement and it kind of gets tuned out. Mm -hmm. But if you have this really bright red guy on, his own. on you, yeah, and it's very like outstanding. <laughs> Well, poor anyway. Raptor. He's just doing his job. Well, I mean, for yeah, for him, for he, job. he's gonna have to uh, consider <laughs> it's going. It's kind of like he's sitting out going forward. But it is funny hearing them talk about it after as well. He, uh, you know, I don't know. I think he kind of thought it was funny after the fact too that he had made a deal of it at all. He probably would have made the shots anyway. Sure. But it's the heat of the moment thing. It's much mm -hmm. like you were saying on the previous clip. It's like in the heat of the moment, when you're engaged. And you got a job to do? Yeah. It's, uh, it's do or die. Do or die. <laughs>